Good morning. I'm Keith Russell, the Senior Citizens Pastor of the Bridge of Hope. We welcome you today to our church program. We do pray that each of you will be blessed by this program and that you will be touched by the presence of God. A few days ago, I was thinking of this time that we are confronted with this year. Man, it has been a very difficult one up to this time. It has came in and visited us and brought much sadness and much sorrow. Even as I speak now, there are those that are very sickly with the virus. Some has passed away even this week. My, the sadness that's in our land. And there are other areas that also came into focus during this year that brought much trouble. But then as I was thinking of all of this, an old song came to my mind. And I want to share a couple of verses and the course with you. Though tempest may blow and the storm clouds arise, obscuring the brightness of life, I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies. The master looks on at the strife. I know that he safely will carry me through, no matter what evils be tied. Why should I then care? Though the tempest may blow, if Jesus walks close to my side, living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confining in his great love, from all harm safe in his sheltering arms, we are living by faith and we will feel no alarm. Let us pray. Eternal and righteous God, as we come before you this morning, first of all, we thank you, God, for loving us, dear God. We thank you, God, for being with us this year, God. In all of these areas, dear God, we could not have made it had it not been for you, oh God. We thank you because, God, that we know that you're ever with those today, God, that are grieving. Those today that has lost loved ones, dear God, you are with them today, and we thank you for them. Oh God, we ask now, God, that you would give us the strength, dear God, to look unto you, oh God, each day, I think of the psalmist, dear God, that the word was mentioned, dear God, when my heart is overwhelmed, when I'm in trouble, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. And God, we recognize this day that Lord, that rock is a solid rock. That rock is, our hope is based on the solid rock, dear God. So Lord, we just thank you today for all that you're doing for us, dear God. Help us, oh God, today to walk by faith, believing, dear God, that no matter what may come, Lord, before us, you have already been there, God, and you will safely take us through. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now for a few minutes, why don't you go ahead to the chat room and visit with some of your friends before our program starts. We love all of you. Thank God again for welcoming us into your home. Bye.
Good morning, Bridge of Hope, and welcome to another Sunday service online. We are so grateful to be able to come to the Lord uh, and gather together virtually, amen, and give the Lord all the praise that he deserves. Um, let's just take a moment to gather our thoughts, gather our attention. There are definitely a lot of things that sometimes pull on our attention, especially at home, but let's try to um, just focus on what uh, we're going to be doing right now, which is giving the Lord all the praise and the glory and the honor that he deserves. Amen. He has given us so much and he has been so good. And we just want to raise right now our praise like a banner. We want to raise our, uh, our worship to him for he alone is worthy of all the honor and all the glory. Amen. And the song that we're going to be singing now, it's just a, it's a powerful song that talks about no matter what we're facing, we're going to worship our way out of it. Amen. We're going to raise our hallelujah. We're going to raise our worship like a banner and just come against uh, everything that might be trying to come against us. We know that we serve a God that is greater, that is stronger. Amen. And so let's just raise this hallelujah together. Raise your worship alongside with me. Amen. Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is. I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder Gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Hallelujah With everything inside of me I raise a hallelujah And I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery Hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. Sing it with me. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Hallelujah, in the middle of the mystery, now raise a hallelujah, fear you lost your hold on me, and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm.
enemy doesn't want you to sing a little louder. Oh, sing in church, sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief, sing a little louder. My weapon is the melody. Overflowing, my cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. <laughs> I won't fear. I won't fear. Sing hallelujah. Yeah. Mountains and valleys, mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. Restores my soul. Restores my soul. Ooh, mercy and goodness. Mercy and goodness. Sure. That I'll see his glory. 
your spirit lives within me so i will walk in your peace your spirit lives within me it's my victory it's my victory go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for all your many blessings. We ask that you continue to guide us through your word, give us strength to face the challenges that we are encountering. I pray for the sick, you know their needs, and ask that you place your healing hand upon them. I pray for the church, not just Bridge of Hope, but all churches. We need your wisdom and guidance through these trying times. Pray for the word today that it will be a blessing for each of us. Thank you for being the almighty Father, healer, protector, and provider. We praise you and bless you, Lord. Thank you that you reign supreme and we are more than conquerors through the gift of Christ. We ask this prayer and all prayers in the name of Jesus. Good morning, Bridge of Hope. This is Deacon Early Johnson coming to you live from beautiful Greensboro, North Carolina. It is so good to be a part of this service. It is offering time. Today's offering is for our missionaries, and we want to make sure that the missionaries that we support overseas and in this country is well taken care of. And I believe every dollar we give, God will multiply it. 
And I thank all of our members for giving. And I thank you, Lord, for all our friends that's giving. I'm going to start off with a scripture. The scripture is taken from Proverbs 3 and 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Praise God. Uh, let us pray. Um, Father, we love you. We thank you so much for this wonderful day that you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, for all of our membership and all of the friends that so faithfully give, Lord. And I pray that the money we raise for this missionary offering would be multiplied and be used only for your glory. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are three ways you can give. You can put uh, your money. Um, as you look on the stream, you can see uh, how to give through the post office box. And you can also give by the Alexio app. And you can also give by bridgeofhope.church. And again, we thank you. Amen.
Good morning, Bridge of Hope. It's great to be back with you to worship the Lord. Uh, thankful to be in his presence among all of our families across the Piedmont and in neighborhoods and living rooms and some joining together. Uh, we give God glory. Today we're going to look at a passage in Ephesians chapter 6 looking at verses 10 through 13. That's Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 through 13. And it reads as follows. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the prince of, of, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand firm. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word. I'd like to speak to you on the topic armed and ready. Armed and ready. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for this great day that you have given us. We are alive and we are thankful for it. And Father, I just ask today that as I go to speak your word, I ask that the anointing a fresh oil would flow upon me that I may speak clearly your word and speak with power. I ask that you would bless the hearers, that the word would dwell richly in us so that the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts and the actions of our hands and feet would be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Armed and ready. Today we begin a new series on spiritual warfare entitled Armed and Ready. We are definitely living in unprecedented times and that's why the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 calls this period perilous times because we are living in the last days. And so these days are perilous or difficult or distressing times. It's a day of evil and diabolical spiritual manipulation. Yet, we need not be worried as disciples of Jesus Christ or afraid of this spiritual war. Isaiah 42 verse 13 gives us comfort because it says the Lord goes out like a mighty man, like a man of war. He stirs up his zeal. He cries out, he shouts aloud, and he shows himself mighty against his foes. It's characterizing God as a warrior for his people. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses uh, 45 to 47, David is in a battle with Goliath. And the Bible tells us, starting at verse 5, these words that he gives that gives us comfort in these times. He says, David said to the Philistine, the Goliath, you come to me with a sword and with a spear spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down, oh mercy, and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly, that's Israel, may know that the Lord saves not with sword, and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. The battle belongs to the Lord and he victoriously gives to us the enemy. 
Amen. And so on that day, we can see in this day, rather, that God has given us the victory. So we have to ask the question, well, how has God given us, his disciples, the victory in this time? Well, on a hill called Calvary, Jesus died for the sins of all the world. And on that day, according to Colossians 2, 14 and 15, he disarmed the rulers and the authorities and he put them to open shame by triumphing over them on the cross. And so when he died on the cross, he literally took the authority and the power that the enemy had against those who trust in God and he gave victory to us. Some of you are asking, wait a minute, Pastor Trevor, if, if we have victory right now, then why are these times so perilous? If we have victory right now, why are we in war? Do you know the name D-Day, the event called D-Day? On June 6, 1944, that great day called D-Day happened. It's the date in World War II where the Allied forces, that's the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, and France, all joined together and attacked Hitler in Germany on the beaches of Normandy in France. They attacked him in the air, they attacked him on land, and they attacked him on the sea. And on that day, and when I say that day, not merely one day, but in that battle, that battle that took place over several days and weeks, it is said that's when the victory of World War II was accomplished. The irony is it was not for a year later that Germany and Japan called an end to the war. So for a whole year they fought it was called the bloodiest year of World War II because Japan and Germany kept fighting though they knew their loss was inevitable. I want you to see in Revelations chapter 12 verse 9, we see a similar event takes place. In Revelations chapter 12, starting at verse 9, and it refers back to this cross. Starting at verse 9. And the great dragon was thrown down. When was he thrown down? When we received this victory. The ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now, the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brothers have been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. And they, God's people, have conquered the enemy by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony for they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea. Listen to this. For the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. So similar, in a similar manner uh, as Germany and Japan, who kept fighting even though they knew their loss was inevitable, Satan also is creating havoc in this world because he knows his time is short. And so he is a defeated foe and he wants to destroy as many of God's creation as a result. And so that's why we are still in a warfare, even though we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Amen. And so no matter what you're going through, you need to know you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ because he has conquered the enemy and all adversaries when he triumphed on the cross. Now, as we turn back to our text in Ephesians 6, we need to see that uh, we need to see two things. We need to see the enemy 
And we need to see the strength and the, and the armor that God gives us to battle the enemy. And I'm going to deal with the enemy first, because if I don't deal with the enemy, you may not respect the armor and the strength that God gives us. The enemy, who is Satan or the devil, when he shows up, I've got to acknowledge in many cases in our world, he shows up and he wins the battle just by coming. How is that? It's because he, he convinces humanity that he doesn't exist. We don't think he exists too often because he's invisible and he's not human. So he gives and, and, and we uh, get puffed up in our knowledge uh, because we think that we can deal with any problem that we face. And many problems are because the enemy is behind them. And so we just figure out, well, I've got education, I've got science, I've got human progress, and we can deal with any problem. Can I tell you, even today, listen, as a church, we're waiting for, uh, we're trusting or, or agreeing that the science, uh, we need that to help us overcome the uh, COVID-19. And we say that because we believe that God is behind the knowledge that man has. But when man thinks or depends upon his knowledge, when man depends upon his own self, oh, we come to a place where the enemy can defeat us. We cannot trust in ourselves. We also see that uh, the devils uh, can be viewed as mythology or legend or frivolous uh, superstition. And because of that, people underestimate him. And so they play with all kinds of games like uh, magic and juju and all kinds of horoscopes because we take for granted his power. And you need to understand you lose battle because you underestimate your enemy. We also lose battles because we see the devil in everything and we give the devil more authority than he has. We become so preoccupied with Satan, and I know Christians that everywhere they're constant. I know people who even like chasing demons. Listen, we don't go looking for the devil. The devil comes after us, but when he comes after us, we come to destroy him and to put him down through Christ, our savior. But we don't go around magnifying him. And sometimes I've heard people pray and they spend more time talking about the devil and Satan more than they see Christ. When we think of God, I think of Psalm where it says, who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts who is mighty in battle. When I think of an enemy coming against me, I think of my Lord who is victorious in battle, who will give me the victory over the enemy. And he doesn't just give it to me. Praise the Lord. He gives it to all of us who trust in him. So let's, let's set the record straight. The enemy, the devil, Satan is real. In fact, in Job chapter 1 and 10, uh, a truth comes out and it it's kind of makes you nervous. It lets us know that the only thing keeping Satan from killing people is God's merciful hedge of protection. The fact that God says, no, um, there's a line that you can't cross. So we see that Satan is strong enough to kill humanity. In Luke 23, 22 and 3, we see that Satan enters into Judas and he literally helps kill or, or bring to judgment the righteous Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 and 45, Jesus tells the account that that demons can come to a place that, that, that may have been cast out of, but then they will join together like a cohort and together they will go to a person who is unoccupied. That is someone who may have been freed, but may not have surrendered to Christ. And then they come back and that person is worse than what they were like before. Let me tell you something. You do not want to play with the devil. You want to yield yourself to God. The enemy is not just real. He is invisible. He is evil. And he is powerful both in strength and in influence. Look at chapter 6 verse 12. 
He says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We have to recognize that Satan is strong and vast in his influence in this world. Consider the names that are used for Satan in the scripture. He's called the tempter. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He's called the evil one and the father of lies. He is a liar. So he's deceiving and he's a perverted spirit and he comes to disguise himself. In fact, uh, 2 Corinthians 11 says he even moves among people to, so that he can disguise himself as an angel of light or a messenger of truth. And often people, when you hear them preaching a false gospel, it's because Satan has perverted their gospel instead of being the true way to a false way. These names correspond to his arsenal or methods or schemes. Hmm. Satan is the instigator. He is behind uh, the spirit of lying and deceit in our world. He's behind the pride and the ego of humanity. He often instigates anger and hate. In his, he instigates bitterness and confusion, doubt and unbelief, division and lust. Oh yes, he even instigates the shame of even believers who sometimes are ashamed to walk among the world and acknowledge I am a follower of the one true Lord Jesus Christ. He likes to make people feel embarrassed as if God is not great and he is behind the greed of this world. He baits humanity into traps by making sin appear attractive, desirable, perfectly legitimate. I remember watching a movie with my wife and, and, and there was a man and he was married and his wife was a kind of bad person. And then this other woman came to uh, his life and she was nice and kind and sweet. And I found myself rooting for that relationship. And my wife said, uh-uh. Remember, that's, that's the adultery. And I said, Lord, my mercy, Satan can get us easily trapped so that we are tricked and deluded to preferring what is wrong and evil than what is good and pure. Satan is also behind the, the phobia and the, and the fear of this world. First Peter 5 and 8, Satan comes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour and his roar often makes people afraid. And let's not forget the spirit of death that grapples people and takes over their minds. He has legions of unclean spirits and demons that can possess the ungodly. In Acts 16 and 16, we read of a girl who is possessed of a spirit of divination. Some call it a python spirit. It's a controlling spirit through witchcraft. And I want to say it again. Our world makes fun of witchcraft. It makes fun of tarot cards and palm readings and, and, and all kinds of things. I want you to know those things are demonic and those things will bring you into defeat and God's children must separate themselves from all that is evil and wicked and ungodly. Godly, and even white magic is ungodly. Do not play with those things. Satan brings defeat into your life because he wants to destroy you through it. In fact, sometimes our sicknesses are not just ailments. Now listen, in a fallen world where everyone is susceptible to sickness, but there are some people who are literally under the physical attack of Satan. In Luke 13 and 11, there's a woman whose back was arched, who was in pain for several years because there was a spirit that attacked her and Jesus had to cast that demon out. Not only do we see Satan working individually on people, but he works corporately as well. As we read in the scripture that we see that there are demonic 
hosts systemically working in society, in political regions, in our judicial and economic structures. Satan uses his evil authorities to serve his deviant ends. These demons work through all systems, through all organizations and structures. So yes, Satan is in democracy and Satan is in socialism and Satan is in republics. He's in the Marxists. He's in continents and countries. He's in commonwealths and states. He's in all religions. He's even in the church, manipulating people to worship themselves and worship the stage rather than worshiping the true and living God. God. Nothing in creation is safe from Satan except the kingdom of God. And that's why we don't war with natural means because we are dealing with a spiritual element and we must fight kingdom with the kingdom of God. Second Corinthians 10 and 3 lets us know we've got to be armed and ready with spiritual strength because the weapons that we fight with are not natural or physical, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what attack is coming against you. God's weapons can bring a, bring victory in every case and in every situation. Christ is the answer for the devil and his war against us. God's army requires something different the natural means of fighting. His army requires his anointing. No wonder in Ephesians chapter 5 and 18, he says, listen, if you're going to deal with something that you can't, that you're not used to dealing with, you don't get your boldness by getting some, they used to call it liquid courage, by drinking alcohol so you can deal with this big situation. No, you get fear with the Holy Spirit. That's how you deal with intimidating situations. That's how you deal with circumstances that are overwhelming. You depend upon the power of the living God, his power and his army. That's why Ephesians 6 and 10 says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. How do we get God's strength? I want to say we got to get God's strength by trusting in God's wisdom and not our wisdom. When you look at God's word, you see that those who got victory got victory because they didn't trust in their own senses, in their own calculations, in their own wisdom. Think of the Naaman, Naaman who was a leper and Naaman wanted to be healed of leprosy and he, no one could heal him. But one day the prophet said, the Lord said, go dip seven times in the Jordan River and Naaman was embarrassed because the Jordan was a dirty river but the prophet says don't be embarrassed you can trust the word of the Lord he dipped seven times and he came up and he was healed of leprosy God's wisdom healed uh, Naaman, not Naaman's wisdom. The wisdom of God is what caused David to fight against Goliath, not with a sword and not with a spear, but a smooth stone and a sling. He was able to bring down that Goliath. I want you to know if you need victory today, you get it by not your own means. You get it by trusting in the wisdom of God, listening to his will and not your own. When Paul and Simon were unjustly imprisoned. The Bible said they sang songs at midnight. They prayed. They worshiped God. And then an earthquake came and shook the very foundation of the prison. How did they get loose? Did they get loose because they paid off somebody? Did they get loose because they had some instrument to get their shackles undone? No. They trusted in the name of our God. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots but God's people must trust in the name of our God. Hallelujah. That's how we get victory in this world and consider the ultimate victory, the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ when he triumphed on the cross. Think about how crazy this sounds to people. Let me get this straight. I'm going to overcome my evil 
by trusting in a man that I can't see who died on the cross for me how many years ago? Let me get this straight. God came in the form of man through a virgin to die on the cross for people who did not even know him, love him, want him. Oh, the wisdom of God trumps the wisdom of man. And that is how we today have victory, not in our own selves, but in the wisdom of God. And so his wisdom teaches us that we can't fight the devil like the world. We've got to go, if we're gonna win, in his strength and in his armor. I want us to look at a few things in this book of Ephesians, this epistle about his strength. For the next several weeks, we'll look into his armor. But right now, I just want to look at how we get our strength. And I know we just talked about how strong the devil is and how dangerous he is. Where do we get his strength? Hmm. Look in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 21. Starting verse 17, that was Galatians. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope which he has called you. Listen to this. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power? towards us who believe according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Listen to this. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. Now, I want you to see again. Notice it makes reference to the same areas and regions that Satan seems to have authority, rulers and powers and dominions. But the Bible says Christ has victory in all the heavenly places and we have access to his strength as we trust in the resurrection that gave him the victory in the heavenly places. You get strength to battle the enemy as you trust in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, when you believe that he died for your sin, but he was raised with power and that every circumstance you're in, God, I need resurrection power. You were raised from the dead and I believe you have raised me up in, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I believe you have given me strength. Your faith in Christ's resurrection gives you power to tread upon serpents in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 2, verse 4 through 7. Chapter 2, verse 4 to 7. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming age, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So by grace, we have been saved and raised up in heavenly places in Christ, right? Why? So that we might show in the heavenlies the riches of God's grace. So here, when we trust in the grace of God, God, today's a tough day, but I'm going to rest in your strength. I'm going to trust in your grace, the same grace that brought me salvation. Do you know trusting in Christ for his grace gives you strength. And how does it come overcome the enemy? Because God uses his grace to put to shame the devil. He says, look, 
devil, this weak man, this weak woman who's just trusting in my strength is able to keep you at bay. Your temptations can't overcome her. Your, your tempting can't overcome him. Your baiting and switching won't work with him because they're trusting in me. And so all the demons in hell and all the spirits in the heavenly places who are all arrayed against you, they've got no victory because your strength is in the grace of our God. Let me tell you, you got to believe in the grace of our God. Hallelujah. That's how we get victory. That's how we get it. You say, that can't be it. Yes. We are not warring in the natural. We are warring in the spiritual and our strength comes from grace. Look at chapter two, verse 15 and 17. <laughs> chapter two, verse 15 to 17. He says, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create it himself, one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross. <laughs> There's that cross again. Thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who are Near. Can I tell you something today about the victory that we have in Christ? When we reconcile with humanity and reconcile with God through the cross, he gives us victory. Listen, the place often where Satan has the victory is the place where hostility exists, where bitterness exists, where old wounds refuse to heal. But when we come to each other and we come to the cross and we acknowledge our our sins and we acknowledge our unrighteousness and we acknowledge our dependence upon God and we ask for God's help and his power to reconcile. Do you know what God does? God restores that fractured relationship and he bring, He cast out the enemy. Do you know why this nation is split in half? It is because this world, this nation has refused to recognize its sin. But when God's people acknowledge our sins, when we acknowledge our bias and our prejudice and our hate, when we acknowledge our sin, our adultery, our lying, when we come to Christ and we say, I've hurt you, I've done you wrong, I'm telling you, when we say, I owe you, I'm sorry, I want to give you money, I haven't seen you in 10 years, but I know I took advantage of it. When we come to reconcile because of what Christ did on the cross, my God, power comes. You want to see revival? You want to see anointing? Let us commit to the spirit of reconciliation. Oh, yes. I'm committed to this bridge of hope. And as a church, we've got to be committed to this. We got to speak the truth in love. No half stepping, no denying, no letting people off. But no, we commit to love our enemies and to reconcile with them. I'm telling you, this nation has got to come to the cross. And that's the only way there's going to be reconciliation between communities and the police, between our president, between the Republicans and the Democrats, between the whole community, whatever the division, the only answer is reconciliation to the cross. If we cannot acknowledge that Christ has destroyed hostility, then you're going to lose. But when we can acknowledge, I am dependent upon him and we will speak the truth and confess our sins and lay down at the foot of the cross saying, here's my righteousness. It's filthy rags, but I trust in only the righteousness of Christ. We get victory over the enemy. Chapter three, verse 14 to 19. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father whom all of, he of family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love 
may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. We've got to be rooted in love. Love disarms the enemy. What can he do to somebody who's going to love their enemy? What can he do to someone who's going to forgive? What can he do? No, 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 no. Uh, and, and, and this is not weakness. Weakness, this is not passivity. This is not being a doorstep. No, 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 no. Listen, I, I, I want to even connect this again. Listen, husband and wife must come to the place of hostility and reconcile and commit to love. Parent and child must come to the place of hostility and commit to love. Neighbor and neighbor must come to the place of hostility and commit to love. Black and white, slave, former slave owners and former slaves must come to the place of hostility and commit to love. Legal and illegal must come to the place of hostility. Listen, I don't care what it is. Get off of your political platforms and your high horses and acknowledge the sin that is prevalent and the only thing that can uproot that sin sin is a which has a demon fueling it is the cross of Jesus Christ when we come to the cross and we yield down our hostility and we commit to love because he loved us unto death while we were sinners my God he loved us ere we knew him all our love is due him and we also commit to love others Lord have mercy. Do you know what that does? It puts the enemy in the place of defeat. No wonder he is under our feet. The last place of strength in the Lord is found in Ephesians 4 and 24. Notice in chapter 6 he says put on the whole armor. Notice in chapter 5 he says put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Listen, holiness shuts the mouth of the enemy. Not self-righteousness, not, 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 not saying, oh, I haven't sinned. No, the Bible says in 1 John, if you say you have no sin, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. But if you confess your sin, and, 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 and acknowledge before God, I have failed you. And then you turn to walk and trusting in his righteousness and allow his holiness to not just cleanse you, but empower you. Do you know Satan can't get victory over you? But listen, if you can a man put bring fire to his bosom and not be burned, let me tell you, if you're going to walk in ungodliness, if you're going to walk in sexual immorality, if you're going to walk in uncleanness, you are inviting demons to manipulate you and torment you, to confuse your mind and confuse your body. You are inviting him in every aspect of your life, in your finance, in your relationship, in your marriage, in your job, in, in your business, everything. But when we say holiness unto the Lord, Lord, make me holy and righteous. Lord, let me walk in your truth and walk in holiness that your nature and character would transform mine. What can Satan do to us? What can Satan hold over us? He can't hold over our past. We've confessed it and God has let that ship go ride on the sea of forgetfulness. In other words, he's not bringing it back up. What can he say about our future? We already know Romans 8, if God is for us, who can be against us? Holiness is the robe of victory. Hallelujah. We walk in holiness, not in pride, but in humility, knowing that we have received the character of God by grace. Hallelujah. Victory in Jesus. Victory, strength comes through him. Faith in his cross and faith in his resurrection. Every aspect of his strength is given to us when we trust in his resurrection, when we depend upon his grace, when we reconcile 
through his cross when we are rooted in love and when we put on holiness. Let me ask you something. Do you know that you're in war? Have you been oblivious to Satan? You felt like you're under attack, but you don't know why, you don't know how. Can I tell you, you just, you just have to first yield to Christ. And then secondly, put on his strength. Live in his strength. Go to his cross and trust in his resurrection and be reconciled to him and walk in his love. Put on his holiness depend upon his grace and he gives you victory day after day trusting in Christ today I want us to pray that Lord give us your strength not my own do my wisdom but the strength that you reveal in me, hallelujah, through your word, give us strength, my God, today. Would you join me in prayer, Heavenly Father? Morning, Bridge of Hope. Thank you for joining us in our worship service this morning. Um, we are so glad that you were able to be here. We pray that whatever you heard today, um, you will keep close to your heart and you, we will not only be uh, listeners, but doers of the Word of God. Um, today, we want to remind you of some announcements that are coming up. Wednesday, our adult Bible study is back. So we want to encourage all of our leaders, everyone who is part of any ministry, whether it's worship, next gen, uh, women's ministry, men's ministry, any part of the church, and especially if you're in leadership, that you plan on attending this Bible study. Um, this is a great time since you don't have to be serving at the church to uh, reveal yourself and really acquire all the tools and everything that you can from the Lord to be able to fill your heart and your soul with what he has to say. Um, also on Wednesday we send the replay of our children's church to your inbox uh, because of copyrights we don't keep it available for you to watch on YouTube so you have to have a link and we usually send that in our replay on Wednesday. We also send other resources in there that you may want to check out that you can use with your kids including 
printable coloring pages, including other cartoons that they can watch that are related to our lessons, and many other things. Check it out. On Thursday, we have a seniors Bible study. We also have our college and high school combined Bible study it has been great. And this week we are talking, we're studying Jude and we are talking about love. We're going to be talking about, you know, things like God's love and also dating. So join us. On Friday, we have our middle school Bible study, and they are also studying the book of Jude. So make sure that you let your teens know. All the information to join those Bible studies are in our newsletter. So make sure you sign up if you are not yet. And also check out our replay. All the information for each age group is there as well. All in one place, easy to find for all of our parents. So um, that's it for today. Thank you so much. May God bless you and make sure to connect with us throughout the week in all of our social media platforms. Make sure you sign up for our newsletter and make sure you engage with our content. Share it with your friends. Share a song. Share, share our message. And also let us know if you find any good um, uh, resources out there that you would like for us to share or to read. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Valerie. Thank the Lord for all those who have ministered and led us today, encouraged us in song and, and prayer and giving and testimony. We just give God praise. I want to leave you with this thought, and it is from 1 Samuel chapter 17, 38 and 39. Saul tries to give to David his armor so that David can fight the Philistine. And David says, I can't wear this. It's not for me. He takes off Saul's armor. And that's when he picks up the smooth stones. If we're going to fight the enemy, we can't wear our armor. The Bible says, put on the armor of the Lord, the complete armor of God. Yeah. Over the next several weeks, we're going to be doing a series, Armed and Ready, talking through, preaching through the victory we have through every piece of armor. There are seven pieces. It's a complete set, meaning we're putting on God's complete victorious armament. And I want you to know he's going to give us victory. I don't care what it is in your body, in your mind, in your finance, in, in your family, in your education, in things that are shut. I'm telling you there is nothing, no area that Satan is not gonna give you victory in. Victory in Jesus. Father, I thank you today for the victory that we have through you. And so Father, we arm ourselves and are ready for the battle that you send us into because we are going not in our own name, but in the name of the Lord. Give us victory, O oh God, as we trust and follow you, obey you, and yield to you. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you, Bridge of Hope. Have a wonderful week. Trust in the Lord and be ready for battle. God bless.